This is Maurice Fadiha, the 65-year-old pastor, a pillar of influence within the congregation of the Celestial Church of Christ, who met his untimely demise at the hands of his trusted assistant, Olamileko Ogundibi, sending shockwaves through the community and prompting soul-searching questions about the state of humanity. What could have this father done to him that will bring about such inhumane reaction? Whatever he did, it certainly didn't warrant ending a life in such a cruel and wicked manner. Welcome back to my channel guys. Today we are heading to Ileife in Ocean State, Nigeria. Maurice Fadeho was a 65-year-old shepherd in charge of Celestial Church of Christ, Grace of Comfort Parish, Omitoto, Ileife, Ocean State. He was one of the top shepherds helping the Celestial Church in Ileife. Being a man of charitable character, he took Lekon in as a church worker out of his goodwill. From information gathered from church members, they claim Lekon has never been a registered clergy or church worker in the Celestial Church and he was not posted or transferred to any parish by the authority but rather a boy who the shepherd brought under his care and love and yet this is how he chose to repay him. Lacon's descent into lawlessness within and beyond the church's confines paints a grim picture of betrayal and ingratitude. His repeated clashes with parishioners often led to violent altercation with fellow prophets, leaving wounds both physical and spiritual in its wake. The sanctity of the church being violated, transforming the sacred place of worship into a theater of conflict. However, it was the assault of Mommy Ewa, a female church member that proved to be the final straw for the 65-year-old shepherd. Apparently, Lekon had a thing for this lady. He was going around bragging to everyone that they were an item, even though they had never even had a proper conversation, let alone a date. But you know how it is in small communities, right? Gossip spreads faster than wildfire. And soon enough, the lady catches wind of Lekon's tall tales. And let's just say she wasn't too pleased. She confronts Lekon, lays down the law, and tells him straight up, Hey, look, guy, I'm not interested. So stop spreading fake news about us. But instead of taking the hit, Lekon loses his cool and he goes berserk unleashing a torrent of violence on this poor woman. Can you imagine the chaos that ensued? The whole church was on edge that Sunday, with whispers of the altercation threatening to disrupt the entire service. It was like a powder keg ready to blow, all because of one guy's bruised ego and misplaced affection. His actions really angered the shepherd this time around, like he has really had enough. Determined to restore order, Father Morris took decisive action signaling an end to Lekon's tenure as his assistant and initiating disciplinary measures, retrieving the keys to the church that was in his custody. Some other side of the story is that it turns out that there's another player in this love triangle drama, an elderly member of the church who's got his eyes on this same lady. Now, Father Morris, being the shepherd that he is, seems to be rooting for this other guy to win the lady's heart. But guess who's not happy about it? Yep, you guessed it, Lekon. He's feeling all kinds of bitter because he thinks he should be the one getting the thumbs up from Father Morris. After all, he's the assistant, the right-hand man, and the guy who's always got the shepherd's back. So when Father Morris seems to be leaning towards the other guy, Lekon's resentment hits the roof. He's thinking, why not me? Why him? It's like a pot boiling over with jealousy and frustration. He knew the lady would choose to go into a relationship with the other guy the moment the shepherd approved of it because he is her mentor and she also listens to him without a second thought. His resentment fueled by unrequited desires and perceived injustice ignites a blaze of envy and anger inside him. So on the evening of Monday 26th February, after the close of service, Father Morris knelt at the altar, head bowed before the Lord. But just as he's about to dive into this sacred moment, he feels something gently lands on his head. Confused, he looks up and there is Lekon, his assistant, 
the boy he took under his wing, standing there with an evil look in his eyes. As Lee Kwan realized his identity has been uncovered, it also began between the two. Father Morris was 65 and elderly, so you can imagine his strength compared to this energetic young man. Lee Kwan grabbed the nearest thing he could find, which happened to be a church bell, and smashed it on his mentor's head repeatedly until the elderly man became weak. Seeing him in such state wasn't enough. He didn't deter Leka. Fueled by anger, he is determined to deal with this man. So he got a screwdriver and drove it right into his nose, straight to his brains, killing this man instantly. You think that's enough torture, but no, no, no. Leka was just starting. He got nails and drove it into this man's ears. In fact, I literally don't know what he was trying to achieve by doing that like the guy was already gone and as if that wasn't enough he dragged the pastor's body bathed it with petrol and set it ablaze literally giving new meaning to the word overkill he burst out of the church his cries for help slicing through the evening air drawing the attention of onlookers racing to the home of paola ferry the church founder he pleaded urgently his words tumbling out in desperation his beloved father was engulfed in flames within the church walls. As the alarm spread, concerned onlookers surged towards the scene, their hearts heavy. Yet, what greeted them was a scene of horror beyond comprehension. Amidst the charred remnants and the crimson splatter of blood, the truth revealed itself with chilling clarity. It was no mere accident that had claimed the life of the esteemed shepherd. It was a sinister act of violence, meticulously concealed behind the guise of the fire. As realization dawned on Lekon, he attempted to flee, but was swiftly stopped by the crowd. They detained him, ensuring that justice would not be denied. Lekon was handed over to law enforcement agents, and currently the custody of the Iloro Divisional Police, while the remains of the deceased was deposited at the OAU Teaching Hospital Complex morgue for autopsy. Now we have the second side to the story, which to me sounds really weird. Another resident who asked not to be named, well, for obvious reasons, I mean seriously, well, this who shall not be named said Lekon killed Fadeha because he found out he was dating his lover. Yep, unbelievable, right? This guy claims he isn't a church member, but what he learned was that Lekon learned that the shepherd was dating his girlfriend who also happened to be a member of the church and he decided to confront his superior on the matter on Monday morning. The matter then degenerated into a fight and the assistant killed him in the process. Yeah, sounds pretty unbelievable. I mean, the guy was 65 years old, not 40. But regardless of the motives, one truth remains. No grievance, no matter how profound, could justify the ultimate transgression of taking another person's life especially in such a cruel manner or any manner at all i hope the police ensure justice is done the case has since been transferred to the state cid and lacon unrepentant confessed without any remorse he said the shepherd did not support him to befriend mommy ewa and then he still went ahead and retrieved the church case from him which he pleaded but fell on deaf ears he also said the father dismissing him from his post will be a humiliation to him. His callous disregard for human life laid bare. His grievances, however trivial, paled in comparison to the irrevocable loss inflicted upon the deceased loved ones. Well, I hope he rots in jail for the rest of his life for taking away this husband, father, grandfather, and mentor to many others. As we mourn the loss of a beloved shepherd, we are compelled to confront the darkness lurking within the human heart. May the soul of Evangelist Morris Fadenham find solace in the embrace of eternity. His legacy of service and devotion immortalized in the hearts of those he touched. And may his memory serve as a beacon of light in a world too often consumed by darkness. Today's case is such a sad one, guys. What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. And you've been watching without subscribing. What's stopping you? Please click on the subscribe button below and turn on your notifications 
so you don't miss any updates on this channel thanks for watching guys bye